Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Gagno Atelier. I'm your old pal, Tim Gagno, and this is the Modern Masters Podcast. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. I have got a great one for you today. I'm super excited, as I hope you are, too. We have got so much going on here at the Gagno Atelier. It is not even funny. But as always with the Modern Masters Podcast, you know that I bring you the best of the best of the best. The name Modern Masters Podcast is because we actually bring you Modern Masters Podcast in the art world. We don't bring you just anybody. We bring you the best of the best. And today we have got one with us today that you are just going to absolutely love. But before we do that, if you could do me a favor, if you can hit the like button, if you're watching us on Facebook live, or if you are watching us on YouTube, hit the fancy schmancy subscription button and the notification bell. That would be a great help for us. The more times you do that, the more people see that and, you know, the algorithms and all that stuff, they love that kind of stuff. So if you can do that for us, we'd really appreciate it. If you want to know what's going on with the Gagno Atelier, my gosh, there's so much going on. It is not even funny. You can check it out at GagnoAtelier.com. And so uh, I would appreciate you checking that out. There's so much going on. It's not even funny. We've got a store now with merch like you wouldn't believe. You can check that out. You can also pre-order the Illuminated Messiah Bible, uh, which will be out uh, in the spring of 2023. We are super excited about that. You want to get yourself a copy of that. So check that out at thegagnotelier.com, and you can check out all the things that's going on with us. And so with that said, I am going to bring on our super awesome guest. I can't wait for you to meet her. And uh, we are going to bring her on right now. My new friend, Lisa Lee. There she is, everybody. Welcome to the show, Lisa. Uh, Hello. Thank you for inviting me on your wonderful show. Oh, no problem. I need like an applause uh, track or something, you know, like (laughs) clapping and cheering and screaming on there. That would be super cool. I'm going to do that. Somebody write that down. So, (laughs) but welcome to the show. I'm so excited. Uh, We just met I've been a huge follower of your art uh, on social media and in, in, in doing the whole Instagram thing and looking at your pictures. And it seems like every time I'm looking through my Instagram feed, your art pops up and I just go, darn it, time to step up your game, Tim, is what happens when I see your art. And so I wanted to get you on this show for a long time. And so for season three, bada bing, bada boom, here you are. It is really, really exciting. So tell us a little bit about yourself so the world can know who you are. Well, first of all, thank you so much uh, for having me on the show. And I'm glad that you like my work. Um, I come from a family of artists. I'm a fifth generation. And what I love to do is paint portraits and wildlife. And uh, I work representational uh, in the old master style. Uh, I always do underpaintings before I start in like a burnt umber color. And uh, yeah, I love I love what I do. And the more and more I do this, the more and more I want to do this, <laughs> you know, so. Absolutely. Yeah, there's nothing like painting. There's nothing like it in the world. The more you do it, the more you want to do it. It's like eating crawfish. Right. Yeah. And the more I do it, I realize how much more I always have to learn. I mean, it's amazing what this you know, paint can do, you know? Yeah, it really is. You know, it's like, I was at a conference, uh, I was at an art conference um, this past weekend. And one of the things that that I, that I had said was like, being an artist is like a dog chasing its tail. You're never going to catch it. Oh but yeah. It sure is fun. It sure is fun running around in the circle. You know? <laughs> exactly. you're never going to achieve it. You know, it's like when you're an artist, it's so much, it's like what you got in here and in here, of what you're trying to get on the canvas, you never actually can pull it off. Right. Right. Yeah. And that's better. (laughs) What's that? You always want it to be better. Yeah, you do. And it's like your skill level is never up to, no matter how great your skill level get, it never reaches your imagination or it shouldn't, I think. 
And if it does, right. then you've got a real problem. Right. Exactly. So you said you, you do, you do portraiture, you do animal portraits. What is your favorite thing to paint? What would you say that like, if there's a category? Wait, you just cut out a second. My favorite category. Yeah. Like what's your favorite thing to paint? Is it people? Is it animals? Is it a type of animal? Like what, what's your favorite? If I said paint anything you want right now, what would you paint? Um, well, I, I have two things that I love. I love painting narrative portraits. I don't want to, uh, I want to tell a story with it. I want to make it interesting. I want it to be meaningful. I want to touch people and connect with people. So the more I move with my portraiture, the more I want it to be more narrative and interesting and the concepts. <clears throat> and then I love wildlife. I just love wildlife. I feel like we live in a day and age where everything is so digital and iPads, iPhones, laptops, NFTs, like everything keeps moving, moving, moving so quickly. Um, I just love nature. So uh, I guess I'm turning into a earthy, crunchy girl uh, <laughs> where I, I really love painting wildlife. I, I, a grizzly, uh, a buffalo, uh, rams, elks. Uh, I'm going to paint. I have a, a project that's upcoming with uh, an American bald eagle. I love the majestic creatures, but then mm -hmm. also I love uh, painting, you know, dogs or cats also. Um, so my dog did come in the room here. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to keep her <laughs> happy. Speaking of, yeah, speaking of wildlife, here comes the dog. <laughs> like, you know, just pat her and keep her happy and hope that she doesn't bark during the interview. Oh no, that's no problem at all. That's no problem at all. The, uh, I remember when we were interviewing, uh, on, uh, we were interviewing Simi, uh, Jackson from, uh, from Rosemary and company brushes and, and her dog, Max, who I am a huge Max fan. Um, and so her dog, Max is like, is like their mascot. Mm -hmm. and, and I love that dog because that dog loves mud and, oh, and it's like a, it's like some kind of labradoodle poodle thing. And it's not a small dog, but that thing jumped in her lap. She was talking to me, holding <laughs> this giant dog on her lap. And yeah. I'm waiting for about any second for my, my dog Tia to just jump right up here. She's a big dog. Mm -hmm. So, but she's yeah, getting like the bigger they are, the more they want to be a lap dog. Exactly. They don't know the difference. Yeah, so. that's right. That's right. So that's good though. So you're, you, you're painting all these animals, but you live in Florida and you didn't say gator. You didn't say. <laughs> no, I mean, I, you know, people would think that I'm going to be painting, you know, the wildlife around me, but I really am drawn to, uh, you know, different kinds of, uh, I mean, I love, you know, birds too, but mm -hmm. I don't really, you know, consider myself a bird painter. It's all of wildlife. It's all animals. I just really just feel so strongly gravitating towards, you know, even I want to work on some Indian art. Um, the Seminoles are right here. Mm -hmm. I, you know, also, um, well, I have a lot of artists that I admire. One of them being is John Coleman. And I love, 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 love his work. I mean, he can paint, he could draw, and he does these incredible sculptures, and I just love all the Indian art. So mm -hmm. somehow I, I FSU. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is, I'm in FSU country. You're not so much, but I, this is FSU country. Let me tell yeah. you what. You got to yeah. watch out. If you don't like FSU down here, you could get oh, yeah. beat up. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah. This is hardcore. We got an FSU campus right here right here in Panama city. We had one of their satellite campuses right here. So oh, that's great. A lot yeah. of Seminole pride in, in, uh, in Panama city beach, but yeah, uh, exactly. you know, plus Tallahassee where they are is right, is right down the road. So yeah, exactly. You know. Yeah. My daughter goes up there. Oh, well, there you go. There you yeah. go. Well, let's, let's you, you brought up that you brought up the, the wildlife photos. Let's show some of your wildlife uh, paintings off. And uh, we've got two of your wildlife pictures here. Let's talk about this one. You had mentioned the buffalo. Oh, look at that. So tell us about this painting. Yeah, I really was drawn to this buffalo and the texture and the mood, the feeling. I really try to get into the eyes. So the eye is very detailed. Um, because I like to try to capture a sensitivity with 
wildlife, even if it's a grizzly, whatever it is, I try to really work hard on that eye area. So you can feel the animal a little bit. Um, I love the texture and, you know, buffalo is the power of the buffalo. Mm -hmm. but yet this is very like calm and serene. So a different and you work in oils. I work in oil, charcoal and graphite. Nice. Yeah. I just love the, love the background, the mist in the background, the fog. And you're right. You're absolutely right about the eye. You know, when, when you're painting an animal and, and I do a ton of pet work. Right. Oh, I keep losing you a little bit. There we go. That should okay. be better. There we go. I hit the mute button. <laughs> okay, then it wasn't me. I know what I'm doing. Let me tell you what. It, it's a train wreck. <laughs> but, um, I do, a, I do a, a lot of pet portraits and like 72 a week sometimes. Wow. That's just, incredible. Yeah, there's a lot of pet portraits and it's all, it's all about the eyes. It yeah. really is. The eyes are everything on an animal. Yeah. And animals have very different eyes than people. One of the biggest mistakes that people make when they're painting animals is they make their eyes look human. And yeah, a huge mistake. Yeah, you know, animals, animals don't have whites to their eyes. A lot of people don't know that. Even chimpanzees and, 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 and apes don't have whites of their eyes. Right. The only time you see your dog's whites of his eyes, or when they're upset and they refuse to make eye contact with you. So they're looking over there. They're looking over here. They're, you know what I mean? Cause they've right. done something wrong. That's the only time you'll see it. Cause animals, um, the colored parts of their eyes takes up the entire, the entire right. socket. Yeah. And so they look very different than we do. And so when you capture an animal's eyes, right. It really, it sells the image, you know, of the animal. Yeah. yeah. You know? That's what I like to do. I like to, um, have people connect with the wildlife, you know, um, you know, there's so much crazy going on in the world that, you know, it's just kind of my little friendly reminder of like, look at all the beautiful nature and wildlife around us, you know, that's a great point. You know, it's like, we get worked up about all these things, you know, inflation, gas prices, stress, wars, this and that animals, they don't care. Okay. <laughs> they're not stressed about any of that. You know, they're just trying to eat and sleep and do other things. And, and they, they look at life a lot differently uh, than, than, yeah. than people do. And it's like when you're painting the animals in their, in, in their life. Yeah. People can connect that. Plus let's face it. Humans tend to, what's What's the word? I'm going to use a big fancy college word. Anthropomorphize. I said, totally butchered that word, but <laughs> um, you know, we put human traits on animals and, we try to make them look, but we can find like little personality traits in the animals that, that are totally not there, but we right. put yeah. it on them. And yep. um, I did a series of paintings on uh, hermit crabs oh, and, wow. and their little eyes, they've got some personality in those things. And so I was able to make really funny comedic paintings with these hermit crabs, you know, so you can do a lot of things with, with paintings. Speaking yeah. of eyes though, let's talk about these eyes. Look at, look at this one right here. Oh my goodness. Y'all are about to see something. Look at that one. <laughs> look at the eyes on these, on, on these rams here. Oh my gosh. Talk to me about this one Now This is, this is charcoal. This is charcoal. And actually I added a little bit of, um, <laughs> Uh, Rembrandt's uh, black pastel to it. It's very rich and creamy, mm -hmm. and I can get even darker. Um, I really wanted to feel the texture of the ram's horns, like you could feel, like you can get in there and almost like grab it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I needed to get darker, so sometimes I, you know, you know, go to the um, the pastel because it can get that richer, darker, you know, so, which I love, but um, yeah, I just love the interaction of these two Rams. And once again, it's like that, that texture of the fur, the texture of the horn that I'm very drawn to, or it's like that feeling, you know, um, the one Ram in the back has kind of got that crazy eye a little bit. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, yeah. Yeah. So. And, and, you know, that, and that's the thing though, we were talking about the animal eyes, you know, um, sheep, goats, lambs, they, they have a very distinct eyeball. 
that, that yeah. doesn't look, that, it's almost like a frog's eye. You know, it's like Kermit the frog eye, the way yeah. it goes like the iris part goes like the wrong way or something. It's really amazing. Um, and you're right. The antlers are absolutely just spectacular. So for the, for, for our young artists out there that are new, how long do you spend on a piece of art like this? How, how many hours would you estimate? How many days would you estimate you were working on this particular piece? Um, you know, I don't know. I work on multiple pieces at the same time. It's a question people ask, how long did that take you? It depends. If I have the time to sit and just go, 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 I mean, you know, it, it may be like, you know, you know, two, three weeks I work on something, um, but I work on multiple pieces. So when my eye gets tired, I'll go to the next piece, you know, and I, I'll keep rotating around to keep that fresh eye. So it's like, how long does it take to get there? Well, it took a lifetime. <laughs> right, right. Time. So, um, oh, there's my dog. Ah, he's yeah. excited. Yeah. Come here, but, you know, that That's the thing, though, when, when we're talking about art like that. There he is. All right. Well, hello, sir. There he is. Okay. Um, Let's see if she'll... When, you're, when you're doing artwork like that and you say, you know, if you did it nonstop, nothing else, it would take you about two weeks. A, yeah. lot, of, a lot of art students, they, they, they don't understand that. Yeah. You know, they... they, they Oh, they would draw something and they would, they would only spend maybe two hours and then they call it done. Yeah, I can't. And it's that. like, that's the biggest thing. I'm constantly telling my private art students, slow down. Yeah. Take your time. Right. And I'm also a teacher. I teach at the Coral Springs Museum of Art. I teach adults. I, I teach teens. And, you know, it is the one thing that I always say take your time there's you know it's not a fire drill there's no emergency just take your time and like enjoy the process because a lot of times it's like we want to get you know it's you were saying somebody does something for two hours and then they want to go to the next thing well if you took your time with that one and really dug into it and enjoy the process of being there in that one drawing or painting and not thinking so much about what the you know you're going to do next I think, you know, that's what it's all about. It's like, we're hurrying up to get to the next one, the next one, the next one. And I try to enjoy each one and give it my all for each one and try to learn as much as I can, you know, with um, each painting or drawing. Well, she, I didn't think she was going to be this fussy. Oh, she's, she's like, fine. She's doing great. She's yes. doing great, you know. The But but you're absolutely right, though. You know, it's it, when, when, when artists, when they're new, to doing right. art and they're and and they're seeing themselves progress it's like and i i think one of the biggest problems with it is is that our our, our social media world that we live in everybody's doing these time lapse drawings right. and so you can get a painting that that might have taken the artist five to ten to sixteen hours to finish right but the video makes it look like they did it in 20 minutes or 30 minutes or right. it's five minutes or you know, and it doesn't work that way. And so I love the, the, um, a lot of artists online, um, will do things like, um, they will, they'll do their quick videos, but then they'll take the same drawing or painting and then they'll show the full video and right. it'll be like four hours long or something, you know, right. like, it. and it's like for a lot of my students, I would make them watch the video and I'm like, we would fast forward. And I was like, look, you've been here drawing for for two hours in this class. Right. And look at where you are in your drawing. You're almost, you're almost done. Right. I said, look at this. One of the greatest artists in the world today, they've been drawing for two hours and they're not even they're right lining up the eyes and the nose and they're getting the proportions right. They haven't even done any rendering yet. Right. Exactly. And I think it's because, um, you know, younger students, they're, they're, they don't have enough information. They don't know what to do. You know, if you were to draw an apple, like a, you know, a young child would just draw the silhouette, the line of the, the apple, and it would look like a cartoon. But then, you know, you got to take it further. Well, how do you turn the form? How do you um, create, you know, light and shade? How do you create the light effect, you know, cast shadows, like, you know, it's texture on the apple. <laughs> 
Say hi. Hey, man. Oh, Moe's you. Look at that. <laughs> I's waving. She's waving. I love it. Yeah, she wants to get right in here. And, and what is her name? Her name is Tia. Tia. She's oh, a rescue. Man. Yeah. She's about 11 now. Uh huh. Yeah, she's like. Bucket. Her, her snout used to be jet black. Kind of like mine. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like mine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I used yeah, to. We're, we're both a little gray there now. So yeah. that's she's funny. It's just like, she's like, what's the deal? I'm usually the center of attention. What's going on? I know. Now? I know. Oh. And actually, I was hoping that she would be sleeping, but you know what? Just didn't work out. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, you know, so. they, you know, the they show say, too. never go on, never, go on uh, never do entertainment stuff with, 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 with children and pet and, and dogs. Right, exactly. They steal the show. They steal the show. So, you know, it's like, man, but, you know, that's okay. She's doing great. We love it. We love it. Bring on the pets. Bring on the pets. We're fans of that. So let's yeah. talk about some of uh, when you're doing your, you know, your your charcoal drawings and, and your graph. You also do work in graphite. Yeah. And I love so graphite. what are some of the differences you feel working between the two mediums? Well, first of all, graphite has a sheen to it mm -hmm. and charcoal is matte, right? So with graphite, I work with uh, architectural pencils and I sharpen the points really like I could do a light sketch, but then I, I work with Strathmore paper, which I really, really love. Mm -hmm. And um, I like it to have like a little bit of a tooth to it so I can get into like the detail of everything. Come here, Tia. Come on, lay down. Um, so, um, I really like that. I can really, really work the detail. Uh, charcoal is just different. Uh, you can get detailed, but it's just not the same, but you get that great poster effect, that impact when you walk across the room, it's like, bang, it just, you know, has a great poster effect, you know, with pencil, you can get dark because, you know, I basically tell people, you know, I work with like a 2B pencil, right? For all intents and purposes, but then it's 2B, 4B, 6B, you know, 8B, 10B. You can get really dark, but the darker you get, it also gets a little bit matte. So mm -hmm. I kind of stick in the 2, 4, or 6B area. Um, I have uh, done some artwork where I've made like a combination with graphite and charcoal, but you gotta be really, really careful because you gotta select the areas that, you yes. know, are um, doing. Maybe it's just the face that's, you know, really detailed and then the hair is charcoal or something, but I don't recommend it. <laughs> you yeah, gotta no. be careful with that, yeah. Yeah, it really is a different, like for me, you know, the, I, I love charcoal. I'll, I'll do charcoal all day over graphite. Um, yeah. and, and only because I enjoy the mess. I know yeah. it sounds really weird, but when yeah. you're doing a charcoal drawing, you look like a coal miner when you're done. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, it's on your forehead. It's all over you. And you're like, what happened? A, did a bomb go off or something? And I'm like, well, you know, I get into my work, you know, but you get it covered all over your hands. And there's just something about charcoal. Right. But for me, when I'm doing a charcoal drawing, that's for me where I relax. If I want to just relax and, and, and get in my sketch pad and just enjoy myself and Right. I go to charcoal is my go-to for, for, it's like my day spa. It's a different feeling. And I agree with you. It's just that, I don't know, earthy, I don't know what it is, but it's just, you know, it's all part, part of it. You know, you feel like you get a little messy. You feel like a true artist. It really is. You <laughs> know, know? And, and for me growing up, we, we, you know, we didn't have a lot of money back, back home. And so, um, I, I would draw growing up on paper grocery store bags because that's all the paper we had. Oh, wow. And so, but I would go in the fireplace because we heated the house with wood and right. I would pull out pieces of wood, char oh, okay. charcoal, and I would draw with that. Oh my God, that's so cool. Because there were times that's all we had, you know, and it was like, you know, I need, Timmy needed to draw or I was going to lose my mind. So my mom would, would, would take out the, she would like triple bag the groceries and come home and we would, she would cut them in this special way and open them up. But, but that's what I grew up drawing on was, was right. with charcoal and, you know, pencils and papers and everything. But my paper was paper grocery store bags. And a lot of times it was charcoal out of the fireplace. Now, let me know if this next drawing is charcoal or graphite. Okay. So this guy, he's just such a great character. Uh, believe it or not. Well, my father, uh, both my parents went to the Art Students League in New York City. And my father, uh, 
there was a this older gentleman that used to model over there because he was quite the character, as you could see. Mm. My father did um, a photo shoot of him and uh, some of the greatest uh, uh, photos. He just looks like, a, you know, a wise old man or s little kids think Santa Claus or some people make reference to that. Maybe that's what God looks like. Um, but it certainly uh, people gravitate towards it, I think, because. He's, he looks wise and you, you want to know what he's thinking, you know, yeah. what does he know by this point in his life? So, uh, this I want to know how he kept his hairline. Dang. <laughs> exactly. <that>. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. And and you, can, you can tell, you know, when you're looking at it, the smoothness, uh, of, of, and the detail of the graphite. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So I, again, it's like a texture. So I love things, you know, I mean, that hair I really got into, or I get into the fur or just the texture, trying to feel like to draw something to make it look like it feels like flesh or feels like, you know, there's some wrinkles there or to feel the depth of uh, someone's face or, you know, the, the hair. I just, I have so much fun with the hair and fur. I just love it. Yeah, you did a fabulous job on this one. Just, just the uh, the expression. The, you get a sense of peace looking at this thing. Like this is a very calm, peaceful man. Um, yeah, there, there's so many wonderful things to say about about this about this uh, drawing and and the um, the the way that his flesh on it, you know, his skin is just absolutely flawless and perfect. I love the way that his you have the lost and found edges in the hair. Um, almost makes it look like he's got like a halo about it. And I can see where you get that. This is what God looks like, you know, kind of a thing. Um, it's really, really well done. Absolutely stunning rock and roll. So let's show one more of your drawings. And then I've got a, a painting that I want to show off. Talk to us about this one here. Look at her. Okay. So that's my daughter. She's my muse. And uh, originally her first year of college she wanted to go up to Suffolk University in Boston and my little beach bunny you know used to the warm weather like today it's like 90 degrees you know it is pretty shocking when you live in this weather and then up Boston's Boston. no joke <laughs> 10 below wind chill and 20 below wind chill and so she ended up buying an additional coat while she was up there so she came back down uh, to Florida for the, um, it was a Thanksgiving break. And she said, mom, look, I got this great new uh, fur coat. And I, I, well, the whole thing's not fur. It's, um, it's actually imitation fur, but uh, uh, she said, I said, put it on. So we went outside and I said, I have to take some pictures and juxtapose the ficus, the green ficus. <laughs> you know, orchids and, you know, tropical, you know, palm trees in the background, I ended up doing this great little photo shoot of her. So it reminded me of uh, Dr. Shivago. So I ended up titling it My Shivago. And I love it because it's my daughter. And um, I do a lot of uh, paintings and drawings of my daughter just because also she's there. She, and she's a free model, <laughs> let's face it. <laughs> <laughs> You know, she gets into it. Sometimes I'll put music on and we'll do these great photo shoots. And um, yeah, I, I really, really enjoy that. So she's always willing to do something for me when I can sit her down for a minute and say, hey, let's get creative. Let's do something. And, and, so, what if, and yeah, again, what, go ahead. Yeah. No, I was going to say the texture of the fur. I just love the texture. Now that was done in graphite. Mm -hmm but I try to give that uh, charcoal effect with all the fur. Right. You know? Yeah. And you, and there are tricks to give it that charcoal effect, you know, that you can do with graphite. That, that That's so wonderful. The, right. uh, it is great to have family around to be models. You know, a lot of times artists are like complaining about how they can't find a model. It's like, well, do you have, you know, cause I, I'm a big proponent of painting from life or drawing from life yeah. as opposed to photos. Even right. if you're, you're finished narrative paint, you know, when you do narrative paintings, right. It, it's almost impossible because you're setting up a pose that someone could not pose in. Right. And, and yeah. so you have to do photos, but right. at the same time, when you're practicing, right. Paint, draw and paint from life 
you yeah. gotta have that in your practice because it's gonna inform your your painting and drawing from photos. And people are always like, oh, I can't find a model. I can't find a model. I'm like, do you got family? And yeah. They're like, yeah. They're like, all right, then make them sit down and, and do and what like my solution is is I wait until Mrs. Gagno is watching Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> She will binge watch that show or she's watching her scary cop shows. Yeah, she loves to watch those murder mystery, you know, <laughs> shows that creep me out and give me nightmares and stuff. But she loves those kind of shows. <laughs> and uh, but if if I get her watching that, she's going to be sitting there for three, four hours watching those shows right. at night. Perfect model, right? Right. She's sitting on the couch. So I break out the sketch pad or my easel and I set it up with my back to the TV. She's sitting there not moving. If I'm smart, I'll get her her drinks and her popcorn <laughs> and whatever she needs. And here right. you go. And I've got a model that's not going to move for a couple hours. I know. That's wonderful, right? You know? So there's never an excuse not to have an, a model. Right. Exactly. Like my dog, if she's sleeping or you know, someone sitting on the couch, you know, watching TV or falling asleep. It's like a perfect model. Plus, you know, um, drawing from still life, you know, you could set some things up and you don't have to do a million things. Just that one little thing you right. can do, just do it well. You know, you get a whole heap out of that, you know? So I try to do that all the time too. Right. Now with your wildlife paintings, obviously you got to paint from photos because they don't, you know, right. the buffalo ain't going to sit there for you. Yeah, no, you no. know, <laughs> those, yeah. So, um, yeah, I work from photography with that. And uh, I actually connected with a photographer who works for National Geographic and the Discovery nice. Channel. And he gets some shots that I just could never get, you know. I mean, especially, you know, the grizzly, he gets really up close, you know, to these grizzlies. And it's just, amazing to me that you could be that close and you know in the camouflage and in the water taking these pictures it's just incredible wow that, that's really cool so you've got a great photo library to, to work from with your photos that's, uh, yeah. that's fantastic yeah, yeah. yeah. Mo, mo, you yeah. know and it's like most artists get to be pretty darn good with a camera because you need your right. reference photos you know yeah, i mean now exactly. we have google images and things like that but that can only take you so far Right. Because of copyright reasons. And so you have right. to be careful there. Of course, then yeah. there's Photoshop. So you can, you know, you can do photo manipulations and collages right. to create your, um, your, to create your reference photos from things like that. Um, right. But, it, but it, but it is important. So what do you prefer to work? Do you prefer drawing and painting from life or from photos? What's your go-to? Um, okay. So I think, you know, to keep you on your toes, I think it's really wonderful to paint from life whether in, you know, whatever you can on a weekly basis, just to keep you fresh. But when I do my, my real finished pieces, I am working from photographs. I print out multiple photographs, but I think, you know, you know, you can't forget what it's like to have somebody in front of you. That, that is the greatest thing because you could really feel the dimension and the form turning and you, you have your model right there. Um, and then when you're working from photographs, you have to be really careful not to give it that flat look to really turn the form. And um, back in 2018, I went to Eric Rhodes' uh, face convention down yeah. at Wiltmore, and it was just amazing, just truly, truly amazing. I learned so much. And throughout um, you know, my practice all my life, I've always known to really try to soften edges, but I really, at that point, it hit me over the head to really be very conscientious of softening edges. There are more soft edges than there are hard edges. If you look at the Mona Lisa, the Mona Lisa doesn't have any hard edges in there at all. So I'm constantly thinking of edges now. What is you know, uh, soft or hard, or where's your focus? Cause if you're looking, if I'm looking at you, you're looking at me, we're concentrating on each other's eyes and everything else is not as sharp. So I try to also pick like a focal area. The eyes are the most important to me, but the detail that's all around here, um, everything else is a little secondary to me. So, uh, anyway, did I get off this, the question? <laughs> oh, no, not at all. No, this is this is absolutely fabulous. You know, because talking about your process, you know, it, it, it's that that's the meat. You know, I think a lot of our viewers, they want to know what this 
master artist, how do you do it? You know, what is the process, you know? And so right. you're talking about, you know, uh, you mentioned going to face at the Biltmore, you know? Right. Uh, and if you've never been to the Biltmore, dude, you got to go. But, you know, the Biltmore is pretty fabulous. Um, yeah. But the um, going to a conference like FACE or the Portrait Society, which they just had theirs in April, um, going to conferences like that are, I think, life-changing. Totally. They're crucial. Yeah. And for, for a myriad of reasons, you know, um, right. just the camaraderie alone. And, yeah. and making friends and, 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 and making those connections and, and also though being around, I'm a firm believer that iron sharpens iron. Yeah. And when you get around the elite of the elite of the elite, you are in a good place. And when you're in a place where you look at everybody else's artwork and you say, I have to step up my game. But yeah. the beauty of it is, is you are in a room with people that are way up here. Yeah. And if you're, if you're, if you're here, what better room to be in than to be around people that are above you that can right, raise you up? Yeah. They're yes, gonna you know? Yeah. So surround of yourself with those kind of people. You know, it, it's important. Now, one of my life mottos is if you're the best artist in the room, you are in the wrong room. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, right. when you go to a convention, you meet people that are further in their career or more skilled than you that can help you grow in all areas of your art. Um, and so what, what kind of, based off of that, you said, you mentioned FACE, are there any other art organizations or art uh, events that, that, that you go to on a regular basis? Um, I wouldn't say a regular basis of uh, going to conventions. Um, I have gone to the Portrait Society uh, conventions. I love them. And certainly the FACE is amazing. I do try to take classes when I can and, you know, I do go to a lot of exhibitions that I can go to. I love, you know, making new artist friends. I think, you know, it's a, the art world is a big world, but small world. So it's so nice to make new friends and, hey, how did you learn that? Or maybe they could teach you something or, you know, uh, like that. So I do really, really enjoy that. Um, during the pandemic, um, I was bummed because I was supposed to go to the Portrait Society convention, which ended up just being online. But one of the cool classes that I took, uh, an artist who I admire, Alyssa Monks, she did like 14 weeks of classes, live classes, every Tuesday night. So I made, sh I was always so excited about it because it was something I really, I admire her work so much. And believe it or not, she was a student of my mother's uh, in Clifton, New Jersey. Uh, no, no, oh, wow. Ridgewood, New Jersey. Um, uh, my mother taught her and some of her siblings. She comes from a family of like eight. But uh, so anyway, so I took these classes and I made sure that everybody was fed. The dog was fed. I had, you know, everybody in the family, everybody was fed. And I just, you know, would sit down with like my cup of tea, whatever, my notes and I just dug into it and I, I gobbled that up. It was just so informative and she was so giving of all her knowledge and information. It was just wonderful. So, yeah, that, that, that's an amazing thing. You know, the, I, in some ways, the whole COVID pandemic thing was a nightmare. Now, mind right. you, you and I live in Florida. So we were like, we, when the rest of the country was like in massive right. lockdown and they couldn't even go to the grocery store and, right. And we were going to Walmart without a mask, you know. I mean, it was like, yeah, it was just so different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, Florida. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, gotta love Florida. Sometimes I love it. And um, but the other side of that was is that all these artists had to make money, and so they were doing online classes, yeah. and they were doing podcasts, and they were doing all of these amazing. So the the art instruction content on the internet now is bigger than it's ever been it's incredible and you know think about like like when you and i were, were young and coming up now you came from a family of artists right so you had you had a very different upbringing than i did and you had professional artists in your family that could tell you hey this is how you make a living as an artist this is how you do this this is how you do that so your, your upbringing is very different. But for me, especially growing up in a little tiny, little tiny, tiny town. Right. Very isolated. I mean, 
driving to Boston was like a four or five hour drive, you know, and you didn't even attempt it in the winter, you know, nine months long, you know, (laughs) who wants to do that? So it was like the, um, there wasn't access to art training. If I would have had YouTube back then, right. Where would I be today? It's the, the, the massive amount of information for art training that is out there for absolutely free and for a very small amount of yeah. investment financially, you can get world-class training from the world's best working artists today. So, I mean, I know it's incredible, incredible. Yeah. I, I also love to connect and see what people, other artists are doing all over the world. I mean, it's amazing. I have like artist friends all over the world that I'm connected to and we would never have that opportunity 50 years ago, you know? Right. I mean, think about it. It's pretty amazing, you know? Right. So. Well, I mean, look, we're talking to each other now and, and, and you know, that you're, we're hundreds of miles away. We're having a conversation where we can actually see each other in real time. I mean, the future is like alive. Yes. <laughs> you know, we're here. I remember when I was interviewing Andrew Tischler, I was, it, it, it kind of, I was getting all geeking out about it. He didn't seem like too geeking out about it, but yeah. because he, he lives in New Zealand, yeah, I was talking to somebody live, but he was in tomorrow. Isn't that crazy? So right? I was literally time traveling, you know. I was like, <laughs> you know, but that, <laughs> this is pretty amazing. It really is. It really is. So with the art, uh, you know, education available now, it's like young artists have it made in the shade, you know. Yeah. But tilt that camera up for us because you were talking about your family. And, and this is a painting that your father did. And in there. on your website, your bio says that your dad was an equian artist. Yeah, uh, he's um, he's a, an equine artist. That is, I'm trying to get that in there. There um, we go. Whoop. Here, I got an idea. We can full screen you. That'll help. Oh, okay, cool. There we go. Okay, so maybe if I step back a little bit. So, yeah, so this is a painting. Uh, I'm trying to get it right. I don't know. I'm kind of all over the map. But <laughs> this is a, um, a famous horse called Niatros. And my dad paints only on masonite. Uh, I think he put a paintbrush through a canvas one time, and he said, that's it. So And then he converted over to uh, masonite, you know, with all different kind of primers that he does, mm-hmm. rabbit skin glue, and, you know, all, all the different um, techniques you do to prepare the masonite to paint on it. Um, so anyway, yeah, so this is uh, one of my dad's paintings. Beautiful. From here. Um, so what was it like, what was it like having, because um, your mother was also a watercolorist and an art instructor, what right. was it like growing up having a professional artist for parents? It was incredible to start. I mean, my parents have such a wonderful marriage. They met in the Art Students League, so they're very harmonious together. Uh, You know, they're married over 60 years this year. So I'm proud of my parents. They really have an incredible marriage. And they gave me a wonderful foundation. And growing up in this art family, it was wonderful because we did all this art stuff, right? We went to museums and exhibitions or my father always had students coming in through revolving around the front door, students of all ages. And um, I just found that just fascinating. It was just everywhere I wanted to be all the time. So it was constantly learning or uh, my mother's mother was an, an artist also. She actually, uh, interestingly enough, she was one of the first uh, women to be accepted into Cooper Union in the 1920s, but not allowed to get your degree at that time. Only men were allowed to get their degrees. And uh, so they did offer it to her later on in life. I think she was like in her 60s, but she was in a different place. Uh But anyway, so there would be times where my grandmother would be over and both my parents would be doing or everybody would be doing art. My father loved Pavarotti. So Pavarotti would be playing. (laughs) My dad liked Pavarotti, too. (laughs) Yeah, the three tenors, Pavarotti. So uh, it was really wonderful. We we did a lot of um, 
family art trips to places, you know, wherever we went. I mean, my parents stuck us in a car and when we were kids and we would travel across the country and there would be art exhibits and things that museums that we would go see, you know, so uh, I really enjoyed that. It was a pretty wonderful upbringing, you know, in the modest suburbs of uh, New Jersey. And uh, I really am so grateful for that. I'm so appreciative and I'm feel so blessed that they're my family. Yeah. Uh, what a great legacy. You know, that, that's a beautiful thing. You know, when you're in, you know, art, art is generational. Yeah. You know, the visual arts are, I, I really believe that. Well, any art is, you know, and, and when you're talking about, you know, like what, what kind of a legacy are, are, did your father and your grandparents leave to you? Well, you're an artist now, you know? Yeah. And, and that, that, that's an amazing thing an amazing thing. You know, my kids, they, they grew up going to going to art galleries and hanging out in an art gallery. And they spent three, four nights a week when they were little kids in the art museum in town. And, you know, they would run around the hallways and play hide and go seek. And they're being surrounded by all this beautiful art. And, you know, that was their thing. Well, right. dad was teaching an art class, you know, in the other room, they're running around the, you know, in the art museum. And that was their, that was their like favorite place to go, you know? And so mm -hmm. it's like, it's amazing. And they love to do art now. They're not professional artists, but they, you know, art right. becomes something, it becomes a part of their life in, in a yeah. big way, you know? And yeah. It's so, kind of like, I, I feel like I'm from like a family of singers or family of tightrope walkers or something. This is what we do. Uh, if I could go back into time, I would love to meet my ancestors. Uh, some of them were um, mural painters in northern Italy, in Livorno, in Biella, and the Tuscany area. Wow. I just wish I could meet them. I would love to have a conversation. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> you know? You know, is their art still there? I don't know. I I'm, I wonder. I know they they painted murals in churches, so I would love to. Oh man, that'd be a good pilgrimage to have. Get some ancestry.com and find out and go visit that. Yeah. What a wonderful I, trip that would be. I need to do that. Actually, my maiden name is Bato, so apparently there's a small town called Bato in northern Italy that I have to make a trip to. I've been to Italy a couple of times, and it's just amazing. Um, all art and great food. How can you go wrong? You can't. You can't go wrong there. Good food. You know, who doesn't love Italian food, you know? Exactly. You know, exactly. there's it, it, it ain't Cajun food, but it's close. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Cajun food fanatic, but the, uh, you know, but Italy, yeah. Oh, man, one day I'm going to go there. I was going to go there on my 50th, yeah. but then the whole COVID thing hit. So now we're planning on on uh, me and Mrs. Gagno's 10th wedding anniversary. We're going to go to Italy. That's the plan, oh, you know? So we got a couple of years to save our money and hope that no more pandemics happen. That's yeah, the plan. just for you. Yeah, no kidding, huh? Well, let's look at one more of your pieces of art here. I love this piece, and I want you to talk to us about this. this is, I believe this is one of your newer pieces uh, that I've seen on the interwebs that you have posted. So let's take a look at this piece right here and tell us about it. Look at that. Stop it right now. <laughs> so this painting is called Beyond the Window. And I finished it literally uh, right at the beginning of the pandemic. It was um, a, a wonderful, beautiful lady that I knew that used to do my nails. And she had this very calm beautiful demeanor. Uh, she was a hardworking mom, single mom of two kids. And, you know, we really connected and I, I respected her. And, you know, through uh, getting to know her, I just felt like I needed to paint her. She just had this way about her. So I did a photo shoot of her. It probably took about 200 photos of her one day. Um, and when I took a, I, I had her stand by this stairwell and by this window and she looked out and I took the picture and she just turned and looked at me and she said, I felt that. And I knew at that moment out of the 200 shots that I took, that was the one because it takes a while when you're doing a photo shoot of someone, it's not like a natural thing that they do every day. So you're talking and you're trying to get them to relax and get into like a natural position or easy pose. It just comes naturally. And this was that pose. So 
anyway, so I titled it uh, Beyond the Window because well, we were all behind the windows during the pandemic, but I wanted to give inspiration to never stop dreaming beyond the window. So go, go for your dreams and whatnot. So I had entered this in a bunch of things. And one of the um, exhibitions that I entered, uh, I got accepted to. And a couple of times prior, I wasn't accepted into this uh, competition. And I wasn't even really sure I wanted to enter it because I was rejected a couple of times, but I said, what the heck, I'm going to go for it. I might have a shot because the call was called shelter in direct response to the global pandemic. So uh, thankfully I was uh, juried into the show. I was thrilled beyond belief that I was juried into this. And then uh, I came to find out that a year later, um, Last summer, I found out that it is being included uh, with SpaceX uh, to be put uh, saved on like a nickel fish file uh, and going to be put in a time capsule on the moon. So I was like, wow, I didn't even know it was a thing. And I feel so grateful to be part of this. Uh, everyone in this exhibition, there were 76 artists are included in this. But uh, the uh, Dr. Uh, Samuel Peralta, who was uh, one of the main juror on this, uh, he heads up all this. He's spearheading all this with uh, SpaceX, and he's doing a heck of a job getting, you know, art, poetry, and books, and all kinds of interesting things onto this nickel beach file to go up with SpaceX. It originally was supposed to go up in January, and then it was postponed to the spring June. I recently contacted him uh, just to find out uh, if there was uh, a time, a date that they had, but it will be, uh, I think, launching anywhere between October and December of this year. So I'm pretty excited about that. <laughs> that is absolutely amazing. That's, that is, I mean, just, just the idea of your, your art's going to be on the moon. Yeah, and apparently it could be um, read in any language. I don't know how they do it, you know, but it's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. I know that there, there there's a, a lot of artists that, that have been involved in that. And uh, it's just yeah. it's amazing that they're putting they're basically putting everything you want to know about humans <laughs> and they're putting it on this cap like a time capsule in a way yeah. on the moon. And that is just, you know, I'm thinking like our great, 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 great grandkids, hopefully, you know, be on the moon and they can dig that up and it'll be like, wow, look at this. They said, look at all this stuff. And right. Absolutely. We're now. <laughs> you know, and it's so. I even think, I mean, you know, even like 10 years ago, 20 years ago. So it's pretty exciting. Uh, nothing is, you know, landed on the moon, I think, so, uh, you know, for 50 years. Right. Yeah. So. I mean, it's, it's, it's been a long time. Go Elon Musk, you know, watch out. <laughs> So he's putting Woo. art. He put he's putting an art gallery on the moon. How oh, no. cool is that? You know what an honor that is. Absolutely fantastic. And I know, and to be amongst some of these artists that I just so admire so much, and I look up to, and you know, try to learn from. To be amongst them is just it's just quite an honor. So I'm grateful. So when you were a kid, you know, did you ever think your art would be on the moon? <laughs> never never you know that's never. you know and isn't that so amazing about how life can take us places you know and and and, and you, you you're doing your art and it opens this weird door for you to walk into and, and be a part of a project like that right it's you know, so and here you are you're painting this painting of this woman and you're connecting with you with your nail technician and yep. you know and you're just making friends with her and I mean, how does she react knowing that the painting you did for her is going to be on the moon? Right. We, you know, you go from one point of just having a conversation of saying, hey, I think you would just be such an incredible model. You're so beautiful. You've got this wonderful demeanor. And then in a blink, wow, you're going to be, you know, on the moon. On <laughs> like, the moon. <laughs> like, you know, in a time capsule on the moon, like, you know, I never even thought that this was a thing. It's just incredible it's, it's amazing it's amazing and that's the power of art you know yeah. it connects us with people and then you had that moment with her when you're doing the photo shoot and then you you submit this art to this exhibit it gets accepted to this juried show and then now it's going to the moon and 
who knows how many generations from now, somebody's going to find that possibly. Yeah. And they're going to open it up and they're going to look at the art and who knows, they'll probably make a show out of the art that was on that thing. Right. Right. You know what I mean? And put it on the moon. They'll probably print them out or who knows how they'll do it and turn it into a hologram or something. But people will go through an art gallery on the moon showing that artwork and it'll be like a big right. deal again, you know, and who knows, we'll be long, maybe long dead by then. And, right. you know, but that's, Art is generational. It, it goes beyond just us and it touches lives in ways that really no other medium can, I believe. Yeah, you know? and I, I love that about art. You know, I, I think we all like to feel connected, you know, and I like, I love it when people connect with my art or feel moved by it or it brings them some sense of peace. You know, I try to bring, um, you know, beauty you know, so it's something happy to look at, you know, God knows on the local news or the news, there's so many things. It's like, oh, you know, you, sometimes I hate even turning it on because it's depressing. There's so many sad things. Well, let's like promote all the, you know, some of the good things that are happening too. Happy all the beautiful things. things. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing. Art is beauty, you know, and you, you're creating beautiful things. And, you know, the, the, uh, the ancient Hebrews had a, had a tradition called Hidur Mitzvah. And it literally means glorify God by making beautiful things. Oh, that's awesome. And it's that. like, what you know, that's what art is. It's making beautiful yeah. things. And it's, yeah. and it's a way to connect with people. To me, it's a way to touch God and yeah. people at the same time through creating beautiful, beautiful art. And so what a great, what a, what a great thing. You know, this is absolutely fabulous. I am so glad that you came on the show today. This has been absolutely fabulous. I'm going to put your website up. Okay, cool. So that people can find you. And it is lisabottolee.com. Is that correct? Did I spell it all correct? Yeah. I did. Yes, wow. perfect. Good job. Yeah, I can type stuff every now and then. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> But uh, you can see all of your artwork and a bunch of other things on the side. They can contact you for commissioned artwork, for art sales. It's a beautiful website. And uh, good job there. Making websites is that some tough, stressful stuff. It is. Artists, yeah. You know? This is, it is. Faso. It's I love this website for artists. It's so yeah. Good. Yeah. I use Fa we use Faso here at the Gagno Atelier as well. It's uh, It's definitely works out really good. So it, we need, one day they need to be a sponsor of the show, I think. What do you think of that? Yeah, it I could happen. It. it could happen. Hear that, Faso? Get on out here and we need <laughs> <some> sponsorships. <laughs> but check her out at lisabottolee.com. You guys will not be disappointed with that at all. You guys are going to love it. Check out the rest of her artwork when you get a chance. So Lisa, thank you for coming on the show. This was an absolute pleasure. You are an absolute joy. Uh, your dog was even more fun. Hate to say it, you know, who doesn't love puppies? Um, now she's sleeping. And now she's sleeping. That's good. <laughs> we wore her out. We just wore her out. Coming on, coming on the internet just made her tired, you know? So there so we go. Thank you so much. You know, you are just so much fun and, you know, warm and, you know, thank you. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity <laughs> to be on your show. Truly, well, enough. it is yeah. my pleasure, and I know I know that the viewers are absolutely gonna gonna be checking you out because after seeing your artwork, how could they not? Um, you did you did a great job on the show, and your artwork is fabulous. So we're excited to see you on the moon, and we are excited to see some of what's coming up next for you. Do you have any anything coming up big that that uh, you want to share before we go? Um, just uh, you know, I was in the process I moved actually uh, to a new home and it was quite a process. So, um, you know, you know, it, it side swipe me, you know, because it's so much work packing and unpacking and moving than the whole thing. So during this time period, I've also, uh, I didn't get a chance to crank out as much art as I wanted to, but you know, I'm all settled. And I've been really, you know, I've been trying to work on some things and I have these projects that I'm going to be working on that I'm really, really excited about some wildlife. Uh, so that's going to be coming up and um, I'll keep you posted. Keep us posted. Keep us posted. We'd love to have you on the show again soon. Yeah, I'd love it. I'd love oh, it. Well, we will absolutely do that. All right. Well, thank you again for coming on. I'm going to say goodbye to the audience and I'm going to come back on and uh, we'll say our goodbyes, but uh, okay. thank you again. Thank you. you again for coming on. Okay. Bye-bye.
Bye-bye. Well, guys, what did I tell you? Dude, that girl can paint and draw. Did you see that artwork? That artwork was a fabulous. So don't forget, if you get a chance, go to her website, lisabottolee.com. Uh, she has got some beautiful stuff. Just the stuff we showed, go to her website. There's a lot more on there. So absolutely, absolutely awesome. If you're interested in checking us out and what we are doing, you can visit our website at thegagnoatelier.com. Uh, we've got so much going on. It is not even funny. Our big project, the Illuminated Messiah Art Exhibit and Bible is on tour right now. Uh, we are exhibiting in churches all over the country and hopefully here real soon beyond. And uh, who knows, maybe we'll get on the moon one day. You never know. It could happen. But uh, we are on tour right now with the Illuminated Messiah Art Exhibit and Bible. And our, we are we have a Bible publisher. Uh, and so Broad Street Publishing will be printing and publishing the Illuminated Messiah Bible, which you will be able to get uh, on bookshelves everywhere in the spring of 2023. But you can pre-order that Bible by going to, whoops, this side, by going to thegagnoatelier.com and you can get it for a sweet, sweet discount. So check that out uh, when you get a chance. And as always, if you can, like and share this broadcast. Let your friends know about it. Tell everybody about Lisa's artwork, how awesome that was, and share this broadcast so they can get to know her. Um, if you've got friends that love art, or especially narrative art or wildlife art or portraiture or graphic and charcoal drawing, they're going to want to see her and they're going to want to get to know her. So check that out and hit the share button for me. Uh, and with that said, guys, you know the drill. As always, just remember one thing. God loves you. And so does your old pal, Tim. We'll talk to you next time.